Our next review is a movie called Tin Can. It is in select theaters August 5th, and that's the last thing I'm going to say about this movie, and I'm going to let Bruce and Eric talk about it, because no, no, I, no I'm not going to leave them like this. Let me go with, with the synopsis, okay? This is straight from the press release's mouth. Cold, pale, and in the dark, fret. Played by actress Anna Hopkins, she crashes back into consciousness inside a small metal chamber, aka the tin can, right? Inside herself, Fred attempts to piece together how she was imprisoned as a scientist who was on the brink of discovering a cure from a deadly plague. Fred desperately works to escape her cell to save the last of humanity. This plot synopsis for Tin Can is very interesting. It's directed by Seth A. Smith, and Seth also co-wrote this film. This being stuck inside that cell or the tin can is a major chunk of this movie. But when I say that, it's a major chunk of this movie because it is so uncomfortable to watch and experience. And we're talking about cringy and uncomfortable for I Love My Dad. There is going to be a lot of people who will feel extremely, at least from my opinion, from my vantage point, suffocated throughout a big part of this movie. That's the whole construct of movies like this and movies I'm, I'm assuming like Buried and all that stuff. That's the, the prep. That's a trope. But there is a lot more to Tin Can than, than meets the eye, than meets the actual plot synopsis. There's a lot of different twists. There's some flashbacks, which is, I guess, uh, Eric's favorite cinematic device. There's a lot of things going on in this 104-minute narrative. There's a lot to unpack. I'd like to start with you first, Bruce, regarding Tin Can, because this is, this is a movie in theaters August 5th that I think a lot of people will... I'm not, I'm not saying take issue with. It'll be hard for a lot of people to watch, but the people who really get on this train will take it to heart I think in a good way so yeah uh, yes you talk about barriers to entry this one has pretty steep barriers to entry I think I think you have to be pretty into experimental slash genre film to probably go down this path or at least have a, a adventurous spirit but I would say that yeah 40 40 minutes or so into this movie I, I, I think I even wrote down I felt like it was an endurance test I didn't know if I could make it and it's hard to describe actually we have a short little opening before they get into the tin can where it's like the the regular world and stuff and they're dealing with this fungal outbreak and it's kind of pandemic-y and stuff and i'm thinking like okay whatever but yeah once they're in that can with the main woman it is so claustrophobic i mean it's so close you feel oppressively you feel like you're in the can with that person it's it's weird how they do it but they really do and the sound design does it and just starting out with her just taking various tubes and things out of her own body it's it's a lot it's very very viscerally uncomfortable the sound design right yeah the (laughs) sound design and it just keeps going and going for quite a while and i was like i i don't know man i might have to bail out of this i don't know if i can watch this whole thing and then it it changes and i'm not gonna say what it changes to and i got intrigued and then it kept changing and i got a little more intrigued and by the end of this i I loved it. I thought it was like a near masterpiece. I I was absolutely blown away by the end of this movie. For this underground movie is like, I mean, I guess Cronenberg and Lynch got into a can together and, and then out came this baby. I don't know what happened, but it's it's amazing. Yes, it is an amazing experience. Uh, I was just thinking, I think Bruce Perky just has a, just has a thing. Uh, it's partial to Michael Ironside movies because Michael Ironside is one of yes. them. Yes, <laughs> I didn't mention that he's in here. And it, doesn't he mention, well, I, I won't say why he just mentions it, but doesn't he mention something about his arm in this? Like that's the trope about him, that he always loses his arms in movies. So there's uh, yes again barrier to entry i look that's i'm so glad you call this a near masterpiece this is i i went through the same kind of experiences as you did oh you know this i don't even know i think eric was mentioning about unpacking the ending but that's something that maybe um if we have time today we can just do a little quick three to five minute explanation regarding the ending if or interpretation regarding that I, i'm gonna be honest i have a feeling that eric holmes absolutely loves tin can am i right on this assumption or who knows? Maybe you might surprise me and say you didn't like it one, one bit. Eric, what do you uh, think? No, I, I, I love this. This started off kind of kind of like Cube. And like Bruce said, it's super claustrophobic. Like all the shots are like really close, like almost like almost like too close to where, you know, it, it, it's uncomfortable to watch. If if that was uh, if that was going to be the entire movie, I don't know that I'd be able to sit through all of it. Uh, which is not a knock on the movie at all. Uh, that's uh, that's actually uh, the movie doing exactly what it's trying to do in in that moment when it 
changes as bruce said i guess we'll we'll talk around that um but uh yeah i definitely got some david lynch vibes off of this and cronenberg vibes uh oddly enough i got star wars vibes from it and i think i mentioned to you guys it was like oh so this is what david lynch's empire strikes back would look like <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> um yeah th- this movie goes in some weird places and it was uh does it pay off the the, the weird places the, is there a payoff in like, your opinion now it it did to me i this is one of those weird movies because uh, like anytime you bring up uh david lynch or david cronenberg um you know bring up one of the davids uh you have to expect that the movies aren't gonna end uh where you think they might and sometimes it might get a little too weird for some but for me it was uh yeah this was i think bruce nailed it this, this thing was a masterpiece and it, it's one of those movies that, that bruce said near masterpiece me. bruce said near masterpiece. oh then i completely disagree yes. <laughs> straight up masterpiece <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. You convinced me. It's a masterpiece. How's that? <laughs> Perfect. Um, but yeah, it, it it has like it has all the all the best parts of Cube. It's got all the you know best parts of a David Lynch movie and a David Cronenberg movie, and and it's it it manages to be its own thing as a result of all that. Yes, I really dug this a lot. Can we also mention that this could be the best ever? pandemic movie i mean i guess it's sort yeah. of a pandemic movie um no yeah. it's not uh, oh, really this was, this was shot oh. uh this was conceived and shot before covid uh and i and think then it probably it, created then, covid i think this is the <laughs> yeah, you, you might not be wrong there uh but then i guess i guess hashtag it, lawsuit <laughs> I, okay. I, I don't. I don't remember the story exactly, but this okay. was basically done well before COVID, and then COVID mm. hit, and then they're like, "Oh, I guess it kind of well." Any similarities is a is a <laughs> purely coincidental. <laughs> purely coincidental. But that that was kind of uh, a, another interesting thing about this movie that it you know it says stuff that's uh, prophetic, like almost immediately prophetic. You know. Okay. So I don't know. This is a compliment, but. While watching this movie, I'm thinking, what would this director do with millions upon millions of dollars at its disposal? Or maybe because there's not too much money here, there's just a lot of genius behind the lens. What do you guys think? If armed with all this cash load of money, do you think it's something like this, a masterpiece can, or do you think that that kind of vision would probably be a little bit vanilla because this is this is very uncompromising i think in its execution and i think because it's so uncompromising there are a lot of people who will jump off the train when like somewhere like 40 40 to 45 minutes in the movie what do you guys think as far as well if seth got all that money do you think it'll be i i think it'd be something probably similar to christopher nolan where um i think their movies could be crowd like popular um just because uh like like you said like here's 200 million dollars go make a movie i think uh that they could probably come up with a concept that would capture people's attention and be just different enough to uh garner some hardcore fans in the process okay what about what about you bruce what that kind of i argument? think i like the idea of t- not telling the person you're going to give them as much money as they need and make them come up with the concept first and oh. then just give them the money <laughs> <laughs> and then it would be a real shot in the arm maybe not the arm but a shot in the arm we'll just say a shot in the arm to the industry yes and listeners if you crave certain appendages in your body there are moments in this movie well let's just say uh you might have a little bit of a dance with your own uh, stomach you might feel a little bit queasy bruce was talking about tubes coming out of bodies there are people moaning and groaning are you and you're thinking is michael ironside in the middle of ecstasy or is that just blood curdling pain there's gonna be i've I've got the perfect description this movie is invasive yeah yes (laughs) <laughs> Eric, oh, that, that, you're talking about like the 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 you know hu- give this person a huge budget. I agree with that because um, there could be some very interesting things to come up with. Uh, do not give this person a Marvel movie. <laughs> we do. I thought I, I I totally want them to make their money because they they're clearly talented. Um, this is a this is one of those voices that they don't need to be bogged down in. Well, franchises they I, kind I of think... made it this is a marvel movie right if you think about it <laughs> yeah, um, really? yeah. <laughs> i mean it's part there, of a franchise i'm just saying it there, there, there yeah, <laughs> actually 
that, uh, the, speaking of fran- not that this is a franchise but uh, we we talked about headhunter where it mm-hmm. feels like this little corner of middle earth tin can feels like the little corner of mad god like, yes the, the world yes. of mad god is like we're gonna we're, we're just gonna follow this little i tiny thought corner. of that i thought of the exact same thing you are absolutely right this is a corner of mad god you're correct that's high praise i'm get, you know what i guess i'm gonna give it the least praise out of the three my review of Tin Can is a solid four-star rating. Definitely check this movie out. Again, heed some of the warnings regarding your own endurance test as a movie buff, especially regarding the chamber sequence, which Bruce was really describing in detail. But for me, again, four stars in theaters August 5th, on demand August 9th, and available on home video September 6th. Bruce, what's your rating? Uh, I'm five-star. Solid. Five, five, wow. Okay. Here it comes. Can you beat that? Uh, six point nine star banger. That's how you beat it. He's That's how. Not uh, even, how you, oh, not take close. take that, Bruce. You get. I'm gonna raise your five star, and I'm gonna six point nine star bang it. All He's right. Always six point nine me. I just don't know what to do with this. <laughs> okay. And remember, we're married. You're not to uh, socks and the cheating is not allowed in our common. You union. said cheating was allowed, just not more marriage. <laughs> okay. So I'm following your rules. Very good. So f- for the final film, we're gonna review Prey. I, I really enjoyed it. It is a prequel to Predator. Four stars. That's my review. Moving forward. So it's on Hulu <laughs> on Friday. That is it. That's it. You know what? I, I really feel bad that Bruce didn't get a link. We could have talked about it more. But the good, here's the good news. We got Tin Can. We got Tin, tin Can really makes up for a lot of things. So this, well, actually, Pray for Me is like a four, a four and a half star thing. But yeah, loved it. Enjoyed it. Whatever. Tin Can. Very visionary. So uh, we'd love to hear what you guys... You know what? We're going to put all three of these movies on findyourfilms.com. Okay? So we, we would love to hear if you actually watch these movies. Start voting. Beat Joseph Bridges and get our loot bag at the end of the month. I don't know. We're, there's going to... Again, eight physical, eight pieces of physical media and two two like knickknacks that I've gotten... Uh, I've collected over my 30 years as an entertainment reporter journalist. Okay? So, and we're going to actually start unrolling some of these prizes as the month progresses. Bruce and per- Bruce... And then Bruce Eric, and Perky? Uh, Bruce and Perky, <laughs> Bruce, and, Bruce and Holmes, Eric and Perky. What are eight? There's eight physical pieces of media. Any any uh, Blu-rays, DVDs that you, that you think would be good in this in this box as far as uh, to give them. I'm gonna start actually throwing out some movies. Maybe start thinking about them for our um, maybe for upcoming episodes. You you guys can pick some of the Blu-rays I have, and we'll. Oh, we'll, I got an idea. As yeah. the month goes on, you can just have a little little tiny like two second video of you just adding something to the box up that you're gonna send out. Very good. I love Another it. Another box I, segment. Yeah. I love you it. You know, too many boxes. Yes. I put it in the tin can. <laughs> there you go. And, and we're going to use some of that sound effects from tin can. That'd be so awesome. Okay, so we're done with our featured reviews.